Hello, hello everyone. I'm Dr. Anu George, and we are going to learn today about the documents and record requirements in a clinical diagnostic laboratory. Before we actually start, let's watch a video to understand a few things how the lab holds many things together. To understand what goes on inside a watch, let's make a simple device that will keep time. Now let's see what these four elements are like in our watch. First, we'll take our watch apart, like this. Now that we have seen the video and you understand how a clockwork mechanism actually works, holding many things together, I want you to take that analogy and understand the activities within a lab. Let's examine the sample path or the path of workflow in a lab. It starts with the pre-analytical phase, goes on to the analytical phase and the post-analytical phase. So let's examine each component in the pre-analytical phase. Let's think that the lab analysis starts at the time of prescription of a test. Then there is patient preparation. The patient has to prepare for whatever test has been prepared. The patient arrives at the lab and he or she gets a registration done, moves on to the collection phase. Collection can happen either in the OPD or in the IPD or in collection centers or maybe samples coming from other laboratories, all of which need to be transported to the lab. So that is the next phase which is transportation and then accessioning or the receiving of samples within a lab. So uh, let us consider that this much is part of your pre-analytical phase. We are moving on to the next phase which is the analytical phase. Let us consider that the analytical phase starts at the sample preparation because for every test the samples need to be prepared in a certain kind of way, followed by equipment management, reagent management, quality assurance and finally the analysis or the testing. The next part would be post analytical. Once the testing is done, the reports need to get validated by the authorized signatories. There will be report preparation, report dispatch, data archival, sample storage and finally sample discarding. So if that is the path of uh, the sample flow, I want you to think about who is responsible for all these activities. We have seen the flow chart starting from prescription, the final products, report dispatch, data archival and sample discarding and who would you think will be responsible for all these activities? Naturally, you would think the lab staff and it is correct. But then let us take all these things together and call it the technical responsibilities. That is a term that you need to remember technical responsibilities. But I have a question, how can technical responsibilities be effectively carried out without all these things? The resource allocations which are inputs and support services across the sample path. So to just put in a few concepts, you will need human resources across the sample path. You will need both availability as well as training and competency assessment. Equipment again availability management like comprehensive maintenance contracts, repair and downtime management, calibrations. Coming to reagents, you need availability of reagents and other consumables and there should be no stockouts. You need accommodation and environment conducive to the operation of all these equipment. You need some mechanism for resolution of complaints. You need mechanism for information management. So all these things together, let us call them management responsibilities. So now we have two terms technical responsibilities and management responsibilities. And let us go back to the previous slides and see where the management may have to stay invested. Let us start from prescription. Would you think uh, management is has any role to play where as far as prescription is concerned? Yes, in what way? 
there should be advocacy services. The laboratory should let the clinicians know what services are available, what are not available, what is the right test to be done. So there is a role there for the uh, management to stay invested even at that stage. Patient preparation may not be part of the management requirement because it's mostly the technical people who tell the patients how to get prepared for the test. Let's consider registration. What is the management's role in registration? Supply of material, supply of the mechanisms for registration may be computerized, may be manual. There should be human resources. There has to be management involvement in registration. Coming to collection, what are the things that management needs to do where collection is concerned. Again, human resources, there should be accommodation and environment, personal protective equipment, infection control mechanisms, collection equipment. There is everything, a lot of things that the management has to do where collection is concerned. Transportation, again, uh, availability of courier mechanisms, transport mechanisms, safe transport mechanisms, infection control mechanisms, all those things should be provided by the management. Accessioning. That is where you receive the samples. There should be human resource. There should be accommodation and environment. Moving on to the analytical sample path. Sample preparation, again, accommodation environment, centrifuges, refrigeration mechanisms, all should be provided by the management. Equipment management, again, availability most importantly, downtime management, calibration options, AMC or CMC mechanisms should be provided by the management. Reagent management, there should be an inventory control mechanism, storage mechanism, human resources. Again, management has to stay invested in this. Quality assurance, provision of internal controls, mechanisms for external quality assurance, all these things should be made available through the management. So now, if everything is available, analysis is a solely technical responsibility. And moving on to the post-analytical path. Report validation is again technical responsibility. Report preparation management comes in again in the, in the provision of formats for reporting or laboratory information systems. Coming to report dispatch, couriers or ward boys or whoever who can deliver the reports. Again, the responsibility of the management. Data archival mechanisms should be facilitated. Sample storage, again, refrigeration is again something that management has to provide. Sample discarding, so biomedical outsourcing agency should be made available through management. So now we come back to the next the slide that we started off with. Let's gather all these things and call it management responsibilities. To recap, allocation of human resources, equipment, reagents, accommodation, resolution of complaints, information management, and there are many more things that we'll talk about as we go along. In the previous slide, we have seen that there are so many areas of concern. And when there are so many areas of concern, how do you actually organize your lab? You need to have something to hold everything together. Such a concept is called the quality management system concept in a laboratory. And you need to organize each aspect, each area of concern in the right way and hold everything comprehensively together through a quality management system. And now that we know about the quality management system, we need a standard to guide you through the process. And when you are looking for a standard, where will you look? And the best place to look for is the International Standardization Organization or ISO. ISO has a standard, ISO 15189, which enables you to get even accreditation by NABL. In India, the confirmation to the laboratory standard 15189 is what gets you NABL accreditation. Alternatively, there are also CLSI guidelines. CLSI stands for Clinical and Laboratory Standardization Institute. This is a copy of the ISO standard, international standard ISO 15189, Medical Laboratories, Requirements for Quality and competence. We will come to each of these components later, but to begin with, let us look at the first page. So, this is the first page of the ISO standard. If you look at this, there are two major divisions here. The first is management requirements and the technical requirements. What did we see in the previous slide? That there are requirements that management has to fulfill and there are requirements that the technical 
uh, side should fulfill. ISO has systematically enumerated each one of those to take care of every area of concern in the laboratory and ISO has defined standards. By standards we mean ISO tells you what to do in each of these areas. So, if you follow this ISO standard, you will build a good quality management system. What we have talked about holding these all these areas together comprises a quality management system in conformance to ISO can be achieved if the standard is followed by each clause. So, to recap, let us see what are the major components of a QMS as per ISO 15189. The major components are management responsibilities and technical responsibilities. We will examine these later and there is a bridge between the management and the technical components and that link is called the quality manager. He or she is a key component of the ISO 15189, the quality management system. And apart from these concepts, ISO also mandates that every aspect of the QMS be documented and the documentation should start from the planning documents which will enable you to establish a QMS uh, with complete documentation, the doing phase documents which will enable you to implement and maintain your quality management system and the check and act phases which will enable the improvement of the QMS again with complete documentation. So, now I hope that you have understood what is the need for a QMS and what is the need for documentation in a QMS. If we have understood this, we can go further into the concepts of documentation through the next video. Thank you.